Spin to win characters in ARPGs have always been a staple and one of my personal favorites. Today we're going to look at the Barbarian Whirlwind build that I've been using. Uh, this build is pushes very smoothly into the Nightmare Tier 50s. Uh, goes into the 60s as well, as long as there's not a ton of ranged mobs. And it easily transitions over to Hammer of the Ancients with a functional build just by replacing one weapon and gloves and with a min-max build by replacing those two items plus both of your rings. Uh, this additionally keeps the same Paragon board and makes it so you can swap back and forth with only one glyph change. I've been really enjoying Diablo 4. I love me some spin to win, so let's jump right into the guide. First off, let's take a look at the aspects. Uh, I'm doing aspects a little bit differently here. Uh, we've got Grasping Whirlwind on the helmet. This one is arguably a complete piece of junk. It rarely procs. It never procs when you want it to, and it just doesn't pop enough. However, when it does work properly, it's pretty awesome to have. However, you could easily pull this one off your build uh, for a little bit more damage or a little bit more survivability if you didn't want to use Grasping Whirlwind. For the chest piece, we're using Rage of Haragoth. This is another optional item where you can use just a normal legendary chest. If you're going to go with a regular legendary chest, you could get plus ranks to Challenging Shout. Uh, you could get damage reduction while fortified, uh, fortified generation, and damage resistance versus close or distant enemies. So definitely some good options there if you don't have or don't want to get the Rage of Haragoth. The Gore's Devastating Grips are definitely a staple of the build. It adds a little bit of fun as well as you can time your explosions for stopping your Whirlwind. This also is going to help you really take advantage of Edge Masters as well, which we'll get into shortly. However, the Splody Bombs from the Whirlwind and Gore's Devastating Grips get into the millions. Uh, the largest number I've seen is about 11 million from the explosion, and it is just a super fun addition. Uh, another thing here is the plus ranks to Whirlwind. That is just good stuff. Uh, as you see on this pair, I've got plus four ranks on Whirlwind, and even though it's not a max roll on the Whirlwind Explosion, still just absolutely loving it. Temerity is definitely the bread and butter of the build, and additionally, it gives you near 100% uptime to your conceited uh, aspect. So those two are going to work hand in hand. Uh, Temerity is going to keep that barrier up for you, which also just gives you massive survivability. And then additionally, that is going to keep the uptime going on your conceited that you'll be using while there's a barrier active, you have a 50% increased damage. And then on the boots, we are using uh, this particular one eluding. There's nothing worse than having your shouts off a cooldown and getting stunned. So I'm using this one for when I do the higher content. If I do get stunned, I'm not going to get burned all the way down through the stun. Uh, this effect can proc every 20 seconds. And if I do get to low health and become injured, I will get unstoppable. Now, obviously, you want to get 100% uptime on your shouts. However, if your shouts are down, this will save the day for you. Another questionable decision here that I'm really sticking with, and that is disobedience on the amulet. Of course, with the amulet, you're going to get a 50% bonus to any modifiers you put on there. Uh, with the Barbarian and having high armor value anyway, you are going to get way over the 85% armor cap. It will show on your screen that your armor is going up to uh, 100%. However, there is an 85% cap to armor. You're going to get to this super quick and be overcapped with obedience on your amulet. However, that also means that you're going to get to that cap much, much quicker that's why I'm using Obedience on the Amulet for that additional 50%, and it does make a huge difference on keeping yourself at the armor cap. Rings, you don't really have an option on the Barbarian. Uh, you got to go Bold Chieftain uh, whenever you cast a Shout. Its cooldown is reduced uh, per nearby enemy. 
Now, another thing with this particular ring, it is not tied to a dungeon, so you can't unlock this aspect by running a dungeon. Uh, additionally, anytime you find these as you're coming up and leveling your barbarian, never ever trash them. Keep this aspect around, even if it's a low roll, as it is just, it, it feels incredibly rare to get this one and super tough to get upgraded versions of it. So that is one of the options. Uh, additionally, you are gonna have Echoing Fury. Your shout skills generate fury per second while active. This is another huge one for keeping your fury full and that will keep you spinning. On the weapons, uh, for the blunt weapon spot, I am going with Penitent. Uh, we mentioned this one going hand in hand with the Temerity. Uh, this one, we're going to keep that barrier uptime almost 100%. I threw this on a two-hander, so I would get double the bonus, and I've got 50% increased damage while I have a barrier active. Your first one-hander slot, we're going with Dire Whirlwind. Uh, critical strike chance is increased for each second as it's channeled. It is channeled up to 21%. This one I actually had on a two-hander for a while, however... As my crit chance started growing, I didn't feel the need to have the double benefit of Dire Whirlwind on a two-hander, so I moved it over to a one-handed weapon. Additionally, Limitless Rage. Each point of fury you generate while at maximum fury grants your next core skill increased damage up to 30%. Uh, this one is going to be nice as you are going to be overcapped on fury while your shouts are up and while you're screaming. And then last but not least, our two-handed weapon. I'm using Edge Masters on this one. Skills deal up to 40% increased damage based on your available primary resource when it's cast. This one is going to play very nicely with Gores as when we're in a pack and we initiate our Splody Bomb, we're going to want to make sure to stop the channel and let the explosion happen while our Fury is at full. That way when we start channeling again, we get a nice little snapshot for edge masters and we get the full value of this throughout that whirlwinds channel now as far as individual roles on items the you know obviously we're all at the mercy of rng there is uh, a sweet spot as far as what you're going to want on helmets the best roles you can get would be cooldown reduction all stats armor percentage and then strength or increased life or percent armor moving on down as we don't have options on those three unique items to the boots the best thing you're going to be able to get on boost is first off fury cost reduction is absolutely required movement speed as you want to keep your barb click clipping movement speed for four seconds after killing an elite as well helps keep the barb going uh, you can also get Berserking Duration, which is going to help you keep that Berserking Duration up. And then I would love to have something other than Fortify Generation. Uh, of course, Fortify Generation is what I've got on these boots, so that's what I'm going with. However, you can get uh, that Berserking Duration or a Shrine Buff Duration, which will help you out quite a bit there. On your weapons... It's all about vulnerable. You've got to have vulnerable in every weapon. Vulnerable is multiplicative that applies after all of the additive modifiers are put in. Uh, the best thing you can get on your weapon is vulnerable, crit damage, strength or all stats, and then one of the additive modifiers. So close, core, bleed, slow, etc. You want these on all of your items. And that the same will apply to one-handers as well. So two-handers and one-handers, you will want all of these. Now, when it comes to weapon selection on the Barbarian, you want to look at the individual stat that is tied directly to the weapon itself. So since we are going to be using a bleed-style build, we've got to use an edge weapon. This particular weapon is from a rare spawn. Um, I'll put a link up in the cards to it above. Uh, you do miss out on a roll, and you take one bum roll with damage to injured on there, but in exchange, you get super high base DPS value. I've tested it with and without. To be honest with you, the difference is kind of negligible. 
Uh, however, I did find this one that's pretty good, so that is the one I'm using. Uh, you are going to always have to use a slashing weapon for the skill, uh, or for the bleed. So you're going to have to go with a two-handed sword, a two-handed axe, or in absolute desperation, a polearm. Now, as I mentioned, you want to look at the stat that's tied to the individual weapon. For two-handed and one-handed swords, you see directly under the attacks per second, you've got critical strike damage. You're going to want one-handers in your one-handed swords in your one-hander slots to get that additional critical strike damage. Axes are going to give you damage to healthy enemies, and maces are going to give you overpower damage. So you're going to want to make sure to use swords in those offhand slots. Now, this ties into the expertise, and if you're using a two-handed sword as your slashing weapon for Whirlwind, then you're going to want to make sure you have the two-handed axe expertise. If you're using a two-handed axe, then just go ahead and swap this over to two-handed swords, and that's going to give you that additional bleed value. For amulets, you're going to want plus three ranks of all defensive skills, Cooldown reduction is an absolute requirement, then Fury cost reduction as well. It is super important to get Fury cost reduction on your amulet and on your boots, as this just straight up lowers the cost of your Whirlwind, it is going to allow you to channel it more. So this is going to also tie in with our rings, however, cooldown reduction, Fury cost reduction, and plus ranks of defensive skills are just absolutely huge on an amulet. For the fourth slot, you can get uh, damage reduction while fortified or any sort of defensive role. As you see, I've got shrine buff duration. Uh, would love to have the damage reduction while fortified as we do spend a lot of time fortified. Uh, however, once again, at the mercy of RNG. Now for rings. Rings are super tough to put together. Uh, finding something with crit, crit, resource generation and vulnerable, dam vulnerable damage is just very, very tough. Uh, I have yet to find a perfect ring. Uh, in the ideal situation, we'll have crit strike chance, crit strike damage, resource regeneration, and vulnerable damage. Uh, as you see, I've had to go with this one. I've got crit crit and resource generation on one of them, but no vulnerable damage. Uh, I've got crit crit and vulnerable damage on the other with no resource generation. Now, resource generation combined with a consumable will give you 100% uptime on your whirlwind. However, if you don't have it on both rings like myself and you aren't using any consumable, you can still keep your whirlwind up for a really, really long time just with your shout generation. Now, since we're going to be stopping the channel periodically with gores to get the explosion, uh, this allows me to basically spin at will whenever I want. Now, jumping right on into the skill tree, we're going with Lunging Strike as we don't have any other mobility. So, Lunging Strike is preferred. Um, I only use Lunging Strike pretty much for mobility and getting around. Uh, with this in mind, I actually have an extra point that I don't necessarily need here, but when I do use it, I um, am going to increase my berserking time here. Uh, Lunging Strike is definitely the way to go. It gives you a little bit of mobility on a barb that's set up for pretty much straight damage and survivability with no mobility other than movement speed. And then, of course, the bread and the butter of the build is Whirlwind, and we are choosing Furious Whirlwind. Uh, additionally, in the core skills area, we're going to take Pressure Point. Core skills have up to a 30% chance to make enemies vulnerable for two seconds. Our vulnerable uptime is pretty much going to be constant. Now moving on down to defensive, we've got five points into Rallying Cry, and we did go out to Tactical Rallying Cry. Additionally, we've got five points into Challenging Shout, and we went out to Tactical Challenging Shout. Heading on over to Brawling Skills, we've got just one point into War Warcry, and we are out to Mighty Warcry. Additionally, we've got three points into Booming Voice for the durations, and then three points into Raid Leader. Raid Leader is going to heal yourself and your party 
for 3% of their max life every second. Now an optional in this category, however, just huge quality of life, it's 3 points for only a 12% gain, however, swiftness, 3 points into swiftness, is just a nice little quality of life element that you're not going to want to miss out on. And then we go with 1 point into aggressive resistance, just to unlock prolific fury, which is going to give us increased fury generation while we're berserking. Heading on over to Weapon Mastery, we've got three points into Pit Fighter, one point into Hamstring, it is super important to put this point in, every enemy we face is going to be bleeding, this means every enemy we face is going to be slowed. It's going to give us instant slow and crowd control on every enemy in the area, and is probably one of the strongest points for the Barbarian on the entire tree. We're going to take one point into Thick Skin, just so we can unlock Counter Offensive. While you have Fortify for over 50% of your max life, you deal 12% increased damage. Heading on down to the Ultimate, we are of course going Wrath of the Berserker, so stay in Berserk as long as we can is just hugely beneficial. Wrath of the Berserker is going to get the job done for us. Uh, additionally, I've got three points into Heavy Handed, just to get a little bit of additional crit damage. And then to cap things off, we've got Unbridled Rage. Now, as you're leveling, before you get your build dialed in, uh, lots of folks are always concerned with how they can keep their Whirlwind going, as you just are going to run out of Fury. And the easiest, easiest answer is, until you get your Fury generation in order, just don't take Unbridled Rage. Uh, you can take Gushing Wounds, since this is a bleed-based build, or you can go Unconstrained and keep your Berserk time up for a little bit longer. Now moving over to our Paragon boards. I tried to do the set the Paragon up so it's very easy to look at. It's not a bunch of boards sprayed everywhere, and it's just a nice, nice, nice neat rectangle. To start off, we are going to go with Territorial, uh, making sure to hit some of these rare nodes that are just going to give us base multipliers. So we got physical damage, uh, some additional strength. Over here, we get a little bit of armor, even more strength. Uh, the magic nodes down here are going to give us max life, physical damage, and then physical damage and max life on the rare. Additionally, more physical damage over this way. Uh, we are going territorial as our very first glyph. As you see, 77.2% damage to close enemies. It is a nice big fat modifier. We get that on there right away, and territorial is the first glyph I'm going into. Now on the next board, we are going Weapons Master, however, we're not actually going to use the Legendary Node, which will be quite popular for the Barbarian throughout. Uh, on this one, we're getting out to Hunter Killer and the Magic Nodes in this area with damage to Elites and then additionally more movement speed after killing an Elite. Some huge damage and quality of life bonuses there. Uh, we've got raw power 20 percent physical damage and some strength uh we've got more physical damage around it and we are going with the martial glyph after casting a shout skill the active cooldown of every other shout skill is reduced by 1.2 seconds once again super important glyph it helps us get to the dream of having 100 percent shout uptime then we're going to go ahead and head on over to the decimator board uh, once again, we are not using the Legendary Node. This particular one, we're already going to have our enemies vulnerable. It's going to cost us a bunch of points to get over to it, so we're going to skip Decimator altogether. However, we are going to dip into Pillage, 20% vulnerable damage with a little armor gain, some additional vulnerable damage on the side right here, and we're going right into Imbiber. This is another one that's just really really good now 106.9 percent damage while healthy uh what when we are got our build complete we're going to be healthy almost all the time and shielded and biber is going to help us with that but additionally if you do get in a pinch 30 percent increased potion healing so i prioritized getting a biber up there third 
Now we do have some very nice rare nodes here as well with more vulnerable damage. Uh, Arrogance is going to give us damage reduction from vulnerable enemies. And then we're going to move on down and here we're going to be using Warbringer. Warbringer for every 75 fury you spend you gain 12% of your max life as Fortify. This is going to keep our Fortify buff going constant as we're going to be just draining energy like crazy. Our Fury is going to be burning off and we will remain fortified the entire time. We're going with Wrath on this one. Critical Strike damage with core skills. Uh, we've got a few other very nice nodes on this one. Just rare or raw physical damage and additional strength. Uh, we've got Maximum Fury and Fury on Kill. And then additionally, we've got more Maximum Fury and Fury on Kill on the Magic Nodes down below on the way over to Warbringer. So very important to pick those up as well. Next up, we are moving over to Bonebreaker. Uh, this one's about bludgeoning weapons. Uh, once again, not using the legendary node, but we do have some nice other things in it. Um, we're not focused on overpower, so this node, even though it's super close, it's not really going to be beneficial to us. And we're going to be using Exploit. Exploit is really a go-to for every class that can use it. It's more vulnerable damage. Vulnerable, of course, is multiplicative on top of everything else, so you're always going to want to be focused on vulnerable damage. Uh, you see here we're going to be going into while healthy on this board. We got damage reduction while healthy. We got more vulnerable damage, and this is just going to help us stay alive with some damage reduction and gives us more opportunity to stack more and more vulnerable we don't put many points into that board, however, we are moving up to our final board, and this one is going to be Flawless Technique. This one's for dual wield barbarians, we are not going to be dual wielding at all, however, there are some super, super nice nodes on this one. You got raw physical damage and critical strike damage throughout, um, just our bread and butter, physical damage, physical strike damage, or critical strike damage. You just can't go wrong with any of those. And for our final glyph, we're going to be using Disembowel. This is going to give us a little bit more bleed damage and additionally is going to give us 10% reduction of cooldowns whenever we kill a bleeding enemy. Uh, this is actually more important than the physical damage itself is, as this damage 10% chance to reduce the cooldown applies to our shouts and of course we want to keep our shouts up as often as possible we also get a little bit of damage reduction from close enemies in there and we are going to get uh, a little strength bonus and damage reduction from close enemies on our last rare node as well so that will do it for now hopefully everyone enjoys the build uh, i will put a link down to the full build planner down in the description below and thank you all so much for watching. I love Whirlwind. I'm going to be playing with some other Whirlwind builds as well in the future. So keep an eye out on the channel for those. Thanks again, y'all. And I will see you next time around. Take it easy.